Welcome to CSL TV. I just hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is just a review, a reaction, an informational channel. Hopefully, the informational part help you and someone out. And we're just going to watch some videos and talk about them. And if you've been rocking with me, I just got to say thank you so much for rocking with your boy. Because you could be watching somebody else and you decide to stay here and chill with CSL TV. Now, I don't want to make this intro too long because we got so much catching up to do. So I hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Let's the teen's family is Right now, there's a huge manhunt for this escaped inmate. Cops say he's very dangerous and he's a survivalist with military training. He was locked up in Pennsylvania, but on Friday, cops noticed he was missing from the recreation area. They think he climbed on top of exercise equipment to get to the roof and then tied bed sheets together to get to the ground. Cops have found campsites and supplies likely used by the inmate and believe someone may be helping him. He was in jail in connection with a burglary and arson, and cops say he's been on the run before. From the sorority house to the big house, these sisters all dishonored their sacred letters when they became convicted criminals. Lauren Elizabeth Cutshaw, the former Delta Zeta from LSU, was driving to her boyfriend's from a friend's birthday party when she was pulled over in the pouring rain for running a stop sign going 60 miles per hour despite the speed limit being 30. When officers approached her window, they immediately noticed her bloodshot eyes and slurred speech and conducted further sobriety tests. Despite her obvious signs of impairment, Cutshaw repeatedly told officers that she had only consumed two glasses of wine that night. She blew a failing 0.18 on a breathalyzer test and then proceeded to fail the following tests, leading to her arrest. After placing the handcuffed girl in the back of their car, the officers discovered marijuana while searching her vehicle. On the drive to the station, dash cam footage captured Lauren listing multiple reasons she believed she could not have been taken into custody. Please look at my record. It was so clean. You see, I graduated from a really good university. I'm almost a valid Victorian. Is there something I could do? I'm not trying to hurt people. No promise. Off camera, she continued her argument, further telling the officer, I'm a very clean, thoroughbred white girl. You're a cop. You should know what that means. The arresting officer added his reaction to the official police report, writing, statements such as these further demonstrate the suspect's level of intoxication. The LSU grad was booked on charges of speeding, disregarding a stop sign, driving under the influence, and possessions of marijuana and paraphernalia. Cutshaw accepted a plea deal to plead guilty in exchange for the speeding and possession charges to be dropped. She was forced to pay a fine and had her license suspended for 30 days. Justine, Did she really just say she's a thoroughbred white girl and talking about her GPA in high school and all this and other stuff like that? And y'all hear all this nonsense she's saying after she got caught drinking and driving. So if you were to kill somebody, we're supposed to just excuse you took a life? And then you can absolutely tell she's been drinking. Just listen to her talk, how she carrying on, saying all this and that stuff, etc., etc. And you up here like, okay, mm -hmm. still not, you're still going to jail regardless. I mean, you can't talk your way out of that one. And the more you talk, the more his actions, you know what I'm saying, was accurate on why he arrested 30 days. Justine Rands. After a day of tailgating and cheering on the University of Iowa football team against their across-state rivals, the 20-year-old Kai Omega went to the local ice cream shop with several of her friends for an afternoon snack. However, after the full day of tailgating, Rands felt the need to use the bathroom and couldn't hold it to find a toilet. Around 7 p.m., officers were called the business to arrest a woman for urinating inside the frozen yogurt store. Upon entering the eatery, cops reported smelling booze emanating from her, noticed her bloodshot, watery eyes and slurred speech, and found an empty flask on her person. Upon questioning, Justine attempted to lie to the cops, falsely telling them that her driver's license was actually that of a friend's. Officers arrested the young student and charged her with misdemeanor public intoxication. Justine had been serving as the new member educator for Chi Omega and had a large role in planning for future recruitment, but it is unclear if she was allowed to continue her duty of teaching new members the Chi Omega standards as just days before her public urination, the University of Iowa kicked the Alpha Phi sorority off campus for glorifying binge drinking. Catherine well, Technically, what I heard that it's supposed to be a felony. She was urinating in a public 
open area places where kids, anybody could have saw her. So that's kind of like she should be registered as a sex offender, if I'm thinking correctly. Um, I actually go look it up, but I'm pretty sure she got a slap on the wrist. Drinking. Catherine Jean Patterson, the Kappa Delta sister, was a well-known ally of the Black Student Union at the private liberal arts school Franklin and Marshall College. Patterson and several classmates attended a protest at the Lancaster Police Station in response to a police shooting that resulted in the death of Ricardo Munoz, a felon released on bond for the murder of four civilians. In body cam footage, officers responding to a domestic disturbance call approached Munoz's door when he suddenly jumped out and rushed his officer while wielding a knife over his head. The protest turned violent after the crowd began throwing rocks and frozen water bottles at officers in riot gear and the station's windows. Catherine and a dozen others were arrested at the scene and immediately imprisoned. In an effort to curb the practice of capturing and releasing criminals, the Lancaster court system set massive bails and added extra charges to all who were detained. The KD sister was officially charged with arson, riot, vandalism, and criminal conspiracy, as well as several other misdemeanor charges. Her bail was set to an astronomical one million dollars. Don't push a button! Oh crap. Hulu Animayhem is your... She was denied her family's lawyer and not allowed to speak to her father for over 24 hours. He has called the bail set by a judge obscene, maintaining that his daughter would not have participated in the violence. The Black Student Union created a GoFundMe to help offset the required payment, insisting that Catherine was working as a medic during the rally. And while she was tending to those that were hurt or tear gassed, cops rushed over and arrested her. Patterson took a plea deal that resulted in two felony charges being dropped in return for her pleading guilty guilty to misdemeanor charges of failure to disperse, obstructing highways, and disorderly conduct. And she was sentenced to 18 months on probation, fined, and ordered to do a hundred hours of community service. Damn, they did her so dirty. Listening to some of these other cases, and then you hear about her situation, hmm. Like mentally, I'm thinking what I'm thinking, but I'm not going to speak into the universe because I don't want to think like that. But. I already thought like that. But yeah, so she had to do all the months of probation, community service, pleaded on misdemeanors. Like, they really was getting her. She got a nice smile, too. Back in June, Christy, who works as a CT scan technician, met up with a male colleague from Arizona who she was reportedly having an affair with. The colleague had rented an Airbnb, and after meeting up for some drinks, Christy went back to his place. According to police, Christy's husband John also made his way to the Airbnb with a metal bat in hand. John allegedly made his way inside the Airbnb and struck the coworker with the metal bat at least three times and pinned him down to the ground. John then left, leaving the coworker covered in blood, and Christy later told police what he did. John denied everything, but at the home he shared with Christy, police later found blood-covered clothes and the metal bat. Surveillance from the Airbnb also allegedly captured John going in and out of the place around the time of the attack. John's been charged on multiple counts, including attempted murder, but he's pleaded not guilty.